Replacing Philadelphia isn't just about these projects isolated from each other. It's about the back and forth and the cross stimulation of the back and forth. Replacing Philadelphia was hugely ambitious. It was more than just trying to create a performance. It was really to ask what makes a city a city. It's about trying to find spaces where we can connect and create common spaces. I find it thrilling, the whole idea, how it's being done, how it's been gone about. Shame. It's right on time. It's so new that I think who's lead, you know, which is leading the culture, right? It was about paying attention to what was actually happening and trying not to keep going back to what we expected. To somehow to bring everybody together on the same playing field in a way to create something together. When we look at the history in our city, it's predominantly European American. And where, where's the other story? Where's the other story in our city? Where's the story of the people who live here now? And how can we capture that in their own words? What's Philly now? And what helped shape it now based on what we know, best based on what you know, what I know? And how do we, how do we share those stories to help fill in the gap that's maybe between the two of us? Place is really about a way of thinking about something. So for me, the replacing is resituating the thinking about a place. Is there anything that I could think of about Philadelphia that would help um, offer a, a larger uh, frame or conception about who we Philadelphians are? We need to constantly reimagine ourselves beyond the daily you know, uh, utilitarian um, activities. With, and art offers that possibility to reimagine ourselves. Faustine is starting from a, a much more philosophical place. Reggie's like really digging into history, I right. think. And Marty's trying to explore the relationship with the past and the present. What is it in this place of this relationship to artist and art making and a city and its people? How do you bring a city into focus through these practices of artists? It is a way of trying to seed a catalytic impact. I mean, how do you do that? We wanted to create a new curatorial model where there was openness to the project. Witness. Yeah, yeah, I'm the sacrificial witness. The and audience and the community members and the artists would work together to create the project as it moved forward, as it developed. It's a new way for presenting organizations to engage how some artists and many artists make work with um, their audiences. <laughs> That's actually the innovation, or the potential innovation with replacing Philadelphia, is using the creative process, trying to ex expand that realm of understanding and knowledge to um, folks that don't usually engage in that. It's about having art as part of people's lives. I feel that the role of artists and arts organizations is to serve as connectors, to bridge, to bring different people together around different issues. They wanted to imagine a kind of new format for a project that would simultaneously be a kind of process-oriented, art-focused project with um, the community and artists. The idea that there's no boundaries, that it's art exhibits, that it's readings, that it's interviews, that it's dinners together, that it's walks in the woods. <laughs> I realized how important
important and powerful the more intimate experiences were. A lot of really transformative things happened in small groups with artists and people from the community. Well, I do think of listening as being the critical missing element, the secret ingredient for transformative change. How can we continue to capture what that, that intimacy that happens in small groups? Those kind of really powerful exchanges. How can we create that on a larger scale? That's something that I feel is really missing from, from life now. The connection, people connecting not only to artists but to one another. The Bride did some very creative and imaginative thinking around placing people around the project not just the commission artists, but the free radicals. To involve you guys in the conversation, so it's not just a dialogue between us on All stage. All these very interesting roles who have different vantage points and uh, ways of seeing and documenting what they were seeing. This human act of listening and interpreting. For everyone, this city means something different. That's what made it so infinite in its possibilities. If I can make these connections and have these conversations within and around the arts, that new thinking will develop. There's this partnership between an artist and a non-artist. Is there some metaphor in, the, in, this, um, in this process that's emerging for how social, civic, and cultural capital gets built? We're actually trying to pull you into our world, as well as this whole larger replacing Philadelphia final thing. We don't know what relationship, what we're doing today, will have to where we're going. Creating um, the performance is, in this project, ideally paralleled to how does that connect to the other projects, how does that connect to the other components of replacing Philadelphia, like how is that engagement actually navigated? I just found it so at, powerful and engaging to have Marty and come in. something that we've made together to something we're making together. That to me is the greater good of replacing Philadelphia, it's seeing their process, or seeing their performances. Point of departure, point of arrival. I feel like it just makes stronger art, it makes more interesting art, it makes it possible for more engagement. It might be gestural, but it's through the action, you're trying to tell the story. December, and the days for sure. Faustin and Reggie both ended up anchoring temporary communities of real significance, as did my project in the hashtag Philly Saves Earth. It was a different way of falling in love with the city, right? It's falling in love with the people by their telling the stories of the things that they loved. They're bringing their personal stories in as well. Maybe I can find it through you. Maybe a common story can grow out of there. All I know is that I'm very much interested in history or histories. To connect with space, to connect with people. Maybe that's the answer. That's this way, I can really enter into a conversation with my questions and how Hopefully, my questions can meet artists who are based here and their own uh, concerns and how, from that, a common story can emerge. Faustin talks about finding the most vulnerable part of a city and letting that place speak. The space therefore becomes a performer, an actor, just like any other performer, a partner.
I was hoping for a space that would have in itself already layers of history. And in that space, you can't have, you know, you can't ask for better. I think there's tremendous power in music and movement. I'm very big on explicit storytelling myself. Think of a spot in the city that you love. People can take the story and put it in their pocket. A place that for some reason, whether known or unknown, you feel whole. It is likely that you are thinking of a place that has been loved by others for at least 20,000 years. What would a good death look like for the Earth? There's a combination of uh, panic and helplessness when we think about climate change. But I still don't understand really how they could have let this happen. I find it very useful in challenging times to consciously, intentionally expand my perspective. Throughout the city, there is a parallel dimension as obvious and essential as Wawa. <laughs> but invisible to 99% of us. Who here doesn't love a Thorillion adventure story, an epic tale, where the prize is more wonderful than anything that has ever existed before? A story where, right now, we truly and really have absolutely no idea how it's going to turn out. This is a conversation that we're having between you as a viewer, me as a choreographer. And the performers that are actually doing the thing. And there's something really dynamic and interesting and wonderful about that. What do you think you should be seeing? What are you able to actually see? And then how do you feel about that? To all my radio listeners out there, this is I, the Reverend Melvin, speaking to you. performance is completed by the audience's watching or the audience's viewing. They are creating that meaning. Some frustration that may happen earlier in the piece. Actually, when they change how they're looking at the piece, um, starts to become a revelation for them. It's like food, it's like a piece of cake or something. You only enjoy it. Its meaning only actually gets experienced by the viewing of it, by the engaging with it on its own terms. How do you 
provide opportunities for artists to do research and to develop an idea and how do you facilitate um, space and time for failure. What does arts and dance and performance and history mean to Philadelphia? Over the last couple years we've been looking at the bride and reimagining what the bride is and who the bride should be. A big part of replacing was also to test new models of working with artists and audiences that could be the future of the bride, what we would do going forward. The bride really made a concerted effort to think about, as I said, seeding, fertilizing, really priming the earth for these, these ideas to begin, and we're just at that beginning. The hope is that from all of these projects and all of these surround ideas, that the Painted Bride will be able to continue those threads and really think about how this idea, this very important idea of unearthing repressed history and thinking about what gets more memorialized, you know, whose history gets remembered, and hopefully thinking about um, coming up with a, a, a new map of history for Philadelphia. What are the cultural archives of a place and how are cultural archives uh, experienced and shared? That was a really important thing for us as we were developing the project to create this new cultural archive that included other stories. I use that as a touchstone. I go back to that memory because I can see Philadelphia in all its dimensions. As so the first open the gay cop in Philly. Yeah, this can kind of be placed within some of these route years. Oh, we're walking from our Jane. I would say we just began to scratch the surface. With our field notes, I feel like the website does that. It archives a certain uh, history of this city that you're not going to find anywhere else. So, you know, that is oral history. That is what field research was all about. To do that kind of field research in Philadelphia, that sort of historical research um, where people tell their stories, um, it, it's a powerful and profound action. The potential for a project like this to begin to archive the city in a new way. Like what does it mean to create a new cultural archive where, where stories are shared that you wouldn't find other places? I mean, what happens when those stories are shared? Does it change the city? Does it change the way we think about the city? Does it change the way we think about one another? I think most certainly it has the potential to. I think that the possibilities are, are, are endless and I think that, you know, in, in our culture that we need to do things like this. We need to take these big risks and do unwieldy things and see and, and learn from the outcomes. I can see, I can imagine creating new creative experiences that bring different kinds of people together in, in deeply meaningful ways.